My name is Elvia Melendez Ackerman. I'm a professor at the University of Puerto Rico at Rio Piedras. And I have the pleasure of interviewing world famous Joel Crackraft. He is uh, the chairman of the vertebrate zoology department and the curator of the Department of Ornithology at the American Museum of Natural History. I do appreciate that you're giving us from your valuable time. My pleasure. Uh, so, uh, before we were taping, you were telling me that you took the 1965 OTS course. Tell us about that. Well, I was a graduate student at Louisiana State University in my first year. And LSU had just joined OTS. And sometime in the spring, I don't know exactly when, uh, my major professor and head of the museum there, George Lowry, he and Mrs. Lowry drove a vehicle down to Costa Rica because that was going to be the contribution of LSU to uh, OTS. And he then came back after you know a, less than a month and said, you're going to OTS. And I said, what? And, and so he, he said, yes, I've arranged for you to be in the fundamentals class of OTS next summer. And so I went down in June with a graduate student from, o, uh, from LSU who was doing his thesis on wrens all around uh, Costa Rica. And so for that month, I traveled around Costa Rica with him and then took the fundamentals class. And that was a very formative experience. Uh, that's how I got there. Um, it was very happenstance, very fortuitous, but uh, it was uh, a very defining moment um, in my intellectual career because it was a, an incredibly exciting experience to be with the people who were teaching the class. And it was a time, you know, they had the NSF grant, and so they paid us to attend. Uh, a, a nice salary for a graduate student back then, and they paid to bring all these people in, all these instructors in for just a few days in some instances, and then for weeks. And it was a very exciting experience to, uh, to be with the core faculty. And that core faculty was Dan Jansen and Norm Scott, but then there was also Larry Wolf, who had just graduated uh, from Berkeley, and Jose Saracan, who had just graduated from UNAM. And so you had all these young postdocs. Every one of them were kind of essentially postdocs. Um, Dan, I think, might have had his job at Kansas by then, but it was incredibly exciting. And uh, all of these uh, instructors, uh, their, their goal was to get the students to think, to think about questions, to ask questions. And most courses at that time that you took at universities didn't do that. You now, it was, you learn this and, and you repeat it back to me. And it's still that way in many, many courses, to be sure. But that was a very unique course, and it was a lot of field work, and there were no field stations. Oh. <laughs> so we, we would go out and we would camp out. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Dan Jansen this morning showed you some of the places where we stayed, and, and it was trying times because Costa Rica was not very developed then. Um, and I remember distinctly uh, the initial lectures that we had at the University of Costa Rica on the social milieu of, of the country and the problems they had with uh, health care, uh, child mortality, uh, and uh, because of water quality. And it, one of the interesting experiences from the course was that, that uh, we would go out in the field and we would come back to San Jose for a few days and then, uh, and then go back out. And every time you came back into San Jose, seemingly you get sick. And then you get stable, and then you go out in the field and you get sick. So 
a lot of the students in the course were at one time or another sick because of water quality. Yeah. Oh. But it was very exciting. You had to do a project uh, and that was one of the very first papers I ever published was, was an OTS uh, related paper. And uh, we went all over. And I had been to some of the places in June, but uh, the rest of the summer we went all over. And it was very exciting uh, to be with uh, these instructors because they were just recent students themselves, but they knew an awful lot more than, than us. And, and we had some very exciting um, uh, uh, graduate students in the course, you know, people like Joel Cohen, who was at Harvard, and Bob Jenkins, who was also at Harvard, and Herb Rosenberg, and, and uh, some of us, especially those of us sort of interested in birds, and, and uh, we, 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 you know, formed a cadre. A of, network, yeah. A network, yeah, yeah. during the course. So, um, in, in ODS, we often do, or one often does, all kinds of different projects. You've I mean, you're a zoologist, and that's your uh, your call. But what other things did you do that perhaps well, you wouldn't have done? Oh well, uh, the, uh, they they had th uh, things planned for us, uh -huh. and then they gave us time to do our own projects. And they wanted a project that you could do at, at different locations. You know, dry forest, wet forest, montane, and and uh, but we would go out. The nice thing about this course was they were bringing in people from all over. So in addition to Dan showing us and, and uh, acacia ants, uh, we had Carl Rettenmeyer from Kansas State and you would go out into the field and find nests of termites and dig them up. Uh, you could go out in the field and have Howard Odom talk about uh, uh, biogeochemical flows and in the systems and, and ecology of uh, carbon and all that, uh, you, you can't get that anywhere. Uh, so all of the instructors had uh, field components for us to do. And I don't even remember all of them, but we were busy from early in the morning to really <laughs> late at night. And then I was just talking with Jay Savage, and uh, I had met him before that course, I think, but uh, we've, we've kept in touch all for, for many, many years. And uh, I remember uh, a few of us after lectures at, at, in the evening, while Jay would say, it's time for us to ride the roads and, at nighttime and look for herps, or, you know, mostly snakes on the road. And so people like Joel Cohen and I would get in the vehicle, or Bob Jenkins and I'd get in the vehicle with him, or I'd go with Jay by myself. And you just don't have this experience in, in a normal uh, biological station. Yes. Because I had gone to a biological station, and I had studied herps at that biological station. And you don't, you don't get this immersive course like OTS was. Uh, I'm curious, so you took your course in 1965, were there any women in that course? Uh, what was that? Uh, yes, there were, and I don't remember their names though, uh -huh. um, but uh, I, I ask, actually asked Jay about that because my recollection was that there were some, uh -huh. um, but I don't remember how many. Uh, and How many students were in that the course? Oh, you'd have to ask Jay that. I think there was there was about fifteen to twenty. Okay. Yeah, okay. fifteen to same, twenty. Same thing as, as today. Pretty much the same yeah. thing as today. Yeah. Yeah. Do you do you send students to OTS courses? Is this something that you keep uh, recommending? Uh, oh yeah, I recommend it. Uh, but you know, since I'm a systematist, uh -huh. uh, OTS is primarily ecology. Yeah. And 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 uh, I'm a systematist and evolutionist, yes. and, and yes. they don't teach that much yes. in at OTS. And so my students on and off, on and off, on and off. Do a, a yeah. But my students don't uh, tend to gravitate uh, to it. Um, 
and I, I doubt my students would be maybe chosen for it, okay. but I will put in a plug that uh, it's very important for biologists, no matter what they do, yes. to have that experience. Yes. Um, uh, I would even say comparative molecular biologists need to know the organisms yes. better. Yes. And I don't think there's any place anywhere that you can do it better in, than Costa Rica within a very small area. Yet you can just visit so many different kinds of habitats and see so much. It, it, it was a real wonderful experience. So, so you mentioned that OTS was a defining moment in your career and you continue on doing all kinds of different projects in the tropics. Tell us a little bit about these projects. Well, I've worked in the tropics uh, of uh, in doing systematics and bio biogeography of birds in Australia tropics, uh, in Africa, uh, in South America, and uh, in the Andes of South America, um, and so, so I've had uh, many uh, Lat uh, Latino graduate students. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have one now from Colombia, I've had them from Mexico, from Brazil, and, and um, so my heart and my work has, has largely been in uh, uh, tropical, tropical biosystems mm -hmm. on various continents. And uh, I've had graduate students uh, work on Andean biogeography, uh, Himalayan biogeography in, in Southeast Asia tropics, uh, African tropics, uh, and particularly now in um, um, uh, South America because with the Brazilians, we have a very large collaborative uh, a group of uh, researchers, about 30 people, mm -hmm. working on the history of Amazonia. And it you know, involves primatologists, uh, lepidopterists, plant biologists, uh, climate modelers, uh, hard rock geologists, palynologists. It's a very big kind of integrative yeah. uh, uh, project. And I have a student coming from uh, Brazil for her PhD at Columbia University working on um, uh, Amazonian uh, problems. So you mentioned that OTS was a defining moment. Do you, are you telling me that had you not come to take an OTS course, perhaps you would have been doing something else? I don't think I would have been doing something else, but I would have been doing it not as well. Uh -huh. Because OTS, uh, I've had two courses in my life where ideas were central. And one of them was a uh, OTS, that was the first one, and uh, but I also took a course as an undergraduate at Oklahoma uh, in the history and philosophy of science. Mm -hmm. And the teacher was not interested in facts, he was interested in the concepts of ideas and the questions that scientists asked mm -hmm. and how they went about answering them and what their impact was. And that was a course where, where you you, you could bring in all the books you wanted for the final exam and they wouldn't yeah. make any difference. OTS was like that. Each of these faculty members, uh, uh, vir virtually the same ages as most of the students, a little bit older, but not much older, they were teaching us uh, because they had learned themselves uh, how to ask questions about the natural world. and. You know, you have to learn that as a student. You cannot, it's very difficult for students not to be taught how to learn mm -hmm. and how to ask questions. Mm -hmm. Some can do it, but not all can. And so being around these people were, was very, very important. And those two classes uh, inform the way I actually teach. Uh, and you, you just can't, you can't learn that in, yeah. in, in a normal class. So what, in, in your work in the tropics right now, what do you think are the, the challenges in, in working in the tropics, 
uh, what, what do you think are the challenges right now? Well, we've been talking the about the big questions in tropical biology, and for me, it's trop the evolution of biotas, the evolution of tr tropical diversity. Those questions have been around for a long time, but now we're actually able to answer them in a in a at a different scale. So uh, uh, we we have you know molecular biology has made its way in to systematics and ecology, population biology, and now we can ask questions of these systems that we couldn't ask before. And then we, you know, as Dan Jansen pointed out in his lecture this morning, we have the internet and we have ways of communicating that we didn't have before. And it, 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 it's a problem, but it's also a big plus in terms of trying to, to approach these questions. And I think now we, we are uh, entering a time where governments want to fund big scale projects. Uh, they, they, they see the value. We, we see the value in these small scale projects where people really drill in to a particular problem at a local level or a, uh, a, a regional level or a landscape level or even a biota, biota level. But now with integrative projects, like ours, and another one uh, was just funded for, for tropical uh, South America uh, uh, through the National Science Foundation. These large-scale projects have the capability of producing much, much more interesting results because of the integration. And, but the big questions are still with us. Uh, the, and, and in fact, they've, uh, on the systematic side, we're learning much more about tropical biodiversity, although we still know very, very little about it, really. Uh, and on the ecological side, uh, I mean, when, when I was a student uh, at OTS, there was no mention of climate change. Mm -hmm. And that's now a big, big intellectual driver of tropical research, mm -hmm. as it, well it should be. Yeah. And what we're trying to do with it, we're not trying to address the current climate change problem. What we're trying to do is look at the history of how the Amazonian ecosystem, the biota, and the environment got to the point where we're at right now. And we're trying to understand the last six to seven, eight million years of how it changed and how it got to the place where it did now. And that will inform predictions. Mm -hmm. you know, it, uh, the parameters that inform all these models, I think, are probably wrong in some ways because we don't have enough detailed information. And we're, we're going to try to contribute to that. OK. So you're at a place right now. Uh, you know, do you feel do you feel that this is where you always wanted to be? When, when did it all really begin? Oh, when it, did it all? I mean, yeah, did it, you see it, yourself it, as a biologist? It when? began as at, you know, you know, with my high school biology class. I had a really tough, hard uh, teacher, but he liked to get students out in the field. So I right, right away was uh, out in the field. He had projects for us all to do in the field, uh, in the local area, you know. And, uh, and, and I knew right then that I wanted to be a professional biologist. So it started really early. Uh, it's pretty unusual for graduate students. Uh -huh. but, but many of them, uh, you know, many of them get out, when they get out in the field early and young, uh, they, they take a liking to it. Were you supported by your family when you decided to say, oh, I'm going to be a biologist? <laughs> uh, totally. Yeah, totally. Uh, uh, my father worked for a company that made bread and, and cakes and so forth. And he, he, would have, uh, he was a manager. He would have liked for me to, to maybe do that kind of thing. But, but I, um, I started teaching as an undergraduate uh, student, uh, fortunately. I, I was at the University of Oklahoma and they had research for undergraduates 
and, and I took a lot of courses and I started teaching really early. So I started liking teaching you know, very early in, in my undergraduate career. They gave me that opportunity. You can't, you don't get that opportunity no, very much. No, not, not now. Not, I imagine that not then. No, no, yeah. no. Yeah. So, do you think that, do you think that people, or students, biologists, should be interested in the tropics? I mean, why the tropics and not other areas? Well, I think you, you can ask the good, clever questions anywhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, people can win a Nobel Prize from taking one organism and looking at it, looking at it, looking at it. But the tropics, you know, uh, that's where most of the diversity is, clearly. And if you're a organismal biologist, uh, then it makes a lot of sense to think about the tropics. Mm -hmm. Uh, and there's still a lot of questions that are unique to the, uh, to the tropics. Uh, the, the whole questions of how did you get this much diversity? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, if you look the at... The ultimate question. <laughs> the ultimate question in a way. I mean, if you, look at, if you look at all the papers that have been written about why are there more species in the tropics, and it just goes on and on and on. And yet, we don't still have a good answer to it. That's really fundamentally, to me, a very big problem. You have all this brain power asking this one question, why are there more species in tropical uh, Amazonia than there are, say, in Costa Rica or in North America? And it has a lot to do with how you define the project and define the problem. And if you bring in deep time and if, if you bring in different disciplines, you get a completely different perspective on it, I think. Okay. Uh, we, we, that's what we're hoping. <laughs> One last question. Uh, so we're here celebrating OTS 50th anniversary. What does it mean to you? And where do you see OTS going from now on? Well, OTS has been incredibly influential and it you know it has a great future clearly uh, uh, like all things the funding for OTS uh, from all different kinds of sources is critical to keep it going but uh, if you look at the accomplishments of the people who have gone through OTS uh, it demonstrates uh, how important it was I mean, yeah, these people would, would have done good things even without OTS, but to a person, everybody I know, that took one of the fundamentals courses, either recently or in the past, uh, say it transforms, transforms them. And, yes. and, and so I think, I think that, um, that uh, uh, things like OTS are essential. Yeah. But it takes many, many years and a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of dedicated people to, to keep it going. Uh, and I think one could really argue, uh, it, it's a thought experiment, uh -huh. but without OTS getting established in the 60s, would Costa Rica be as well off in terms of biodiversity today as it is? Wow. I, I, you know, I somehow doubt it. That was the yeah. case. Yeah. Uh, uh, it was early, you know. It was very early into all of this, and uh, uh, and I, and that shaped how people in the country look at it. I mean, I think Dan is absolutely right. You need you need to shape people's opinion about it, and there's no no question that Costa Ricans have been for quite a while and are still way 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 more cognizant of the natural environment and biodiversity than people in the United States are. No, no, no doubt about that. And, and OTS helped keep that going. Yeah. I mean, you have NBO and those are great organizations, but OTS also just has trained so many yes. Costa Ricans and so many tropical uh, Latino uh, students uh, that uh, it's... The broader impacts. Yeah, tons of broader impact. Yeah.